What's up everyone, my name is Ale. Welcome back to my world of stocks. In today's video, we're talking all about Palantir stock and Upstart stock, which are two of my riskier speculative uh, stocks in my portfolio. I've been buying them throughout the past year or so after seeing them crash by huge amounts and I decided to jump in on them. Well, they just happened to report earnings this past week and their stock soared as a result. Both of them are up. Uh, over 30% each just in the past week. So um, I've been getting a lot of comments and messages asking me to share my thoughts on those earnings and everything going on with them. Do I still plan on holding on to these stocks long term? Am I cashing in some profits? What am I doing with them? Well, in today's video, I'm going to cover all of that. We'll quickly run through the earnings. We'll take a look at how the markets reacted to it and what I'm personally doing myself with my own positions. And I actually have different feelings, I would say, on Palantir versus Upstart. So it's going to be a fun one. I hope you enjoy it, but let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. Okay, well, let's start with Palantir first, since this is actually my favorite speculative stock of my entire portfolio. And they really came out strong this quarter, not only beating EPS estimates by over 25% and revenue by about 4%, but they were also able to grow their sales by close to 20% year over year at a time when the economy is in horrible shape. See, Palantir relies on both government and commercial contracts, who they sell their AI and machine learning capabilities to, to improve the efficiency of things like the military or random businesses and so on. But if the economy is struggling like it has been for some time, then these entities are going to cut their budgets and not be as willing to hire outside help. However, in the case of Palantir, their services appear to be so incredibly effective and attractive that they just continue to grow regardless. And more recently, the rise of AI, especially with the use of large language models, what we call LLMs, has helped bring even more attention to Palantir's offerings as they also recently launched their own entirely new division dedicated to LLMs called AIP, Artificial Intelligence Platform, which incorporates LLMs into their already highly praised platforms like Foundry, Gotham, and more. And speaking to the success of it in the earnings presentation, Palantir CEO had this to say about it. The depth of engagement and demand for our new artificial intelligence platform is without precedent. Now, keep in mind, Palantir was already one of the most highly recognized names in AI, being named a leader even ahead of Google by Forrester Research, which is surprising to me, and ranked number one in AI software market share by the IDC, which also surprises me. But with the new addition of AIP, Palantir has gotten even stronger, if you can believe it. And the result is that even in this horrible economic climate, they were still able to grow their customer accounts by over 40% year over year, and their total contract value by a whopping 60%. That's huge, guys. Not just that, though, but they were also able to close another 64 deals worth over a million dollars each, 22 of which were over 5 million, and 8 of them are worth over 10 million each as well. But sales aren't even the biggest reason for the climb in the stock price. That honor goes to their huge improvements to profitability. See, Palantir has consistently lost hundreds of millions of dollars every year on the bottom line. And while that's been a hard pill to swallow, I've kept believing in Palantir's potential because of their software-like margins that I felt should translate to strong profit profitability over time as they get larger. Well, it looks like my assumption may finally be starting to come true. As of right now, Palantir carries very high gross margins above 80% and that's been consistent every quarter. Well, not only did we see adjusted free cash flow soar by over six times the amount this quarter, but it also marked the first time in the company's history where they actually generated positive gap operating income. And you can see that right on this chart here. It looks like their losses bottomed out in the third quarter of last year, then ramped way up in Q4, and then actually turned positive for the first time in Q1, this last quarter. That's big, guys. And not just that, though, but Palantir is even guiding for continued profitability with not only positive gap net income in Q2, but actually for every single quarter hereafter. 
which Wall Street, of course, really loved to see, and I did as well. And so in response, the stock shot up by over 20% on the day of earnings, leaving it up over 30% for the past week and over 50% up so far this year. And my personal position is now up just about 50% as well. Valuation-wise, though, it's now at a price-to-sales ratio of almost 10, so I can definitely see a good reason to lock in some profits here and sell the stock, but I just personally can not do it myself. I got to stick with this one long term because not only is the stock still down almost 80% from its all-time high, but in my opinion, the valuation is not even that bad when you factor in the future profitability potential that they're still capable of. In fact, on a five-year price-to-earnings-to-growth ratio, it's sitting at less than one, which is generally considered a good value, especially for a high-growth company. And sure, that growth could evaporate in the coming years, but I just don't think it's likely to happen. Their estimated addressable market is like 120 times larger than what they did in sales last year. And even if they do just a fraction of that, you're still talking about huge growth opportunities there. So I just think that they can keep it going. And I know that we're facing a possible recession. I know that the economy is trash right now. But Palantir is one of the few companies out there that is still somehow managing to grow coming out of the pandemic, especially as a tech company. So many other companies out there are in decline. In fact, we're in an earnings recession right now, guys, if you take a look at overall numbers, but not Palantir. Somehow they're still managing to grow. And just think about it, guys. If they're able to perform this well during this horrible environment, imagine what they could do during a booming economy, during a time when maybe interest rates are going down and this economy and the stock market is taking off. This could be a high flyer. Now, that's just my personal opinion. I still think that it's a risky stock. I still don't consider it a reliable investment. So I keep it relatively small in my portfolio. I only buy on... I would say big dips, and I buy usually gradually, slowly, in small amounts. But it is a stock that I want to hold on to for the very long term. I have high hopes for it. It's one of the more exciting stocks in my portfolio, and I do not plan to sell any shares, at least not at this time. I'm actually hoping to hold on to this stock for many years into the future, if not decades. And like I said, I have high hopes for Palantir. So not selling, it's a hold for me. It's a long-term hold, and I'll probably be buying more on any dips. All right, now next up is going to be Upstart Holdings, Sigur symbol UPST, which is going to be in quite a bit of contrast here compared to Palantir, who's actually growing. But when looking at Upstart, I'll, I'll dive into all of this. When looking at Upstart, you're talking about an artificial intelligence fintech here that is disrupting the traditional lending markets as an underwriter that connects banks and credit unions with potential customers, and then it uses AI to improve the effectiveness and the overall efficiency of their loans. For example, Upstart AI can cut the amount of defaults by more than half at still the same approval rate as large banks. And even if the default rate stays the same, they can still get over 170% more approvals. So the end result is more loans, more approvals, lower defaults, lower risk, lower APRs, and overall just a win-win for, for both the consumer and the loan issuer. And not just that, but over 80% of upstart loans are instantly approved and fully automated with 70% of borrowers applying through their mobile phone, which lowers overhead costs and makes everything faster and cheaper, which is why Upstart has been able to partner with so many lenders, increasing their partner count from 10 at IPO to 50 a year ago and almost 100 today. However, the macro economy has been devastating to certain parts of the finance economy, and Upstart is one of the most heavily hit right now. In fact, this latest quarter actually looked horrible for them with not only their sales plummeting by almost 70 percent but they also went from being profitable a year ago to now generating a loss and yet the stock actually soared by over 30 percent on earnings day and is now up over 40 percent for the past week so how the heck can that be well there's a couple reasons for it first of all Upstart stock was already getting absolutely destroyed over the past year, as even with the recent climb, it's still down 95% from their all-time high. So there was very likely a huge short squeeze that happened here following the report. But the other thing you have to remember is that when Upstart reached those highs of over $400 a share, it was because interest rates were at like 0%, customers were, uh, consumers were 
flushed with stimulus money. And so taking out loans was one of the most popular things to do at that time. In fact, Upstart was generating close to $12 billion in loan originations, whereas now they only did like a billion this quarter. Now, longer term, Upstart predicts an addressable market worth trillions in loan originations. But at the moment, they're only doing about 1 billion, which is like 12 times smaller than what they did the year prior. So that's a huge drop. However, here's where the good news comes in. Not only did the earnings report beat analyst estimates by over 40% on EPS because of how heavily the market had already counted them out, but they were also able to secure another $2 billion plus of loan commitments from banks for the rest of the year, meaning that Upstart has likely bottomed out and is now going to return to at least some kind of growth in future quarters. For reference, here's Upstart's economic uh, risk chart that shows when the economy is the weakest environment for them and it looks like the risk peaked in October of last year and has leveled off since. Now, we're seeing a rise in personal savings rates, uh, a rise in employment, we're seeing lowering of inflation, which by the way, we just got inflation numbers for April this week, and it was the 10th straight month of decreasing inflation, which leaves us now at the lowest inflation rate in over two years. So the hope is that the Fed may ease up on interest rates going forward, which could give some much needed relief to the economy and especially the lending markets if uh, you know inflation continues to drop and then the Fed eases up on interest rates, which is probably another reason why Upstart is guiding for a 32% increase to revenues next quarter and flat adjusted EBITDA, which Wall Street also enjoyed seeing. It's another sign of them bottoming out and potentially returning to growth. Meanwhile, Upsert stock is still trading relatively cheap at a price to sales ratio of less than two. Now, granted, I say cheap, assuming that they return to growth in the future, which is not a guarantee. In fact, right now they're still in heavy decline and they remain a very risky stock. In fact, I think that the average person should not be buying this stock and should not be looking at it as any kind of investment. It's a, it's a speculative gamble that they can actually turn things around and be able to disrupt a very large market in the future. To me, that's exciting. To me, that's worth kind of betting on, and that's why I have a small position in it, but it's only less than 1% of my portfolio, and I'm already up over 30% on it, and I am actually cashing in some profits on this one. In fact, I sold about 20% of my position, just because I think it's gonna remain extremely volatile, and this is a stock that I really wanna be picking up on major dips, and when I can get some good substantial profits on it, I will probably take those because of how risky it is. It's not the same as Palantir in my opinion. It's not as reliable as Palantir, but I still wanna bet on their long-term potential of disrupting a massive market and on turning things around. And I really feel that right now they're just being held down by a very bad economy, but when the economy recovers, assuming that Upstart is able to survive this environment, um, I think that they can be a very high flyer once again, which we've seen happen in the past when interest rates were low. And if interest rates ever start going down again, I think Upstart can fly again. So uh, I'm giving it a chance, but like I said, I'm being cautious with it, keeping it a small position. I will cash in profits whenever I have big substantial gains, only some, but still hold on to a, um, a position there for the long term. And if it crashes a lot, I may actually buy more. So that's kind of how I feel about it. It's different than Palantir. Palantir, obviously, again, I'm, you know, I like Palantir a lot more. I feel much more confident in it. So that's something that I really don't plan to sell at all. But Upstart, it's a little different. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say down below. And by the way, people are always asking me, when do you sell a stock? When do you ever cash in some profits? This is kind of an example here. Sometimes I like to trim a little bit, lock in some profits on a stock that might be a little riskier that I'm not as confident about. I'll cash in some profits. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm still I'm still investing in it long term. I'm still, uh, I still have exposure to the potential that they have. But anyway, again, those are just my thoughts, everyone. I'd love to hear what you have to say down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. I will catch you in the next video, my friends. Hope you're all doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.